Hello, I am Reginald Steele, and I go by the stage name of Silky Nutmeg Ganache. My pronouns are she, hers, or he or him. Don't call me them a day, because I'm fat as hell and I get a fit. Just kidding. <laughs> but today, we're going to talk about gender versus sex. And I love talking about this because when you talk about gender versus sex, there are so many subcategories that we have to talk about that is never mentioned. We don't ever talk about, you know, the social aspect of it. We don't talk about the aspect within, you know, race, as well as economic um, wealth. So today, those are the things that we are gonna cover. But what makes this so unique and special is that while we're talking about these things, you're gonna actually see the transformation firsthand. Let's get started. So growing up, I was born and raised in Moss Point, Mississippi, a place where a lot of dreams don't come true. And I say that because so many people are small-minded, so many people don't understand gender versus sex. I think I was, I was a freshman in college back in 2008 when I understood the difference between gender and sex. You know, sex being what you are assigned at birth and gender being what you identify as. And that is so crazy that I was a young adult learning that, wait a minute, this is actually real in the life. So the things that I was, you know, witnessing on television, I was experiencing it for the first time in life. Talking about gender and its constructs versus sex, you, we can't like not discuss coming out. And what does that mean? I came out officially when I was about 22 years old, but I knew who I was as a child. Back in my day, there were still encyclopedias in Mississippi, and I would go and I would look up homosexuality, gay, and all that good stuff to see what was going on, to see what it was, and I felt like I identified as a homosexual. Like, I knew that I was attracted to men growing up. But what does that mean when you live in Mississippi? Like, it's not always the easiest to come out. So what did I do? I hid, and I, here to be comfortable. I here to keep my sanity. I here to not raise questions or to live a harder life. And that's what a lot of people did at that time. This reminds me of We Wear the Mask by W.E.B. Du Bois. The LGBT struggle is not too far off from the black struggle as for the women's rights struggle. Like, we all have a struggle because this is a male, predominantly white dominated world that we live in. And so, we as people, even as some gay people, have to decide what are we going to do with life and how are we going to live that life. But some of us have to wear that mask. And that mask basically hides and denotes who we are as black people. We often hide who we are from the real world. Our true feelings, our real emotions, the way we live. Some of us, how many of you in here have a phone voice? That's wearing the mask, you know. You have a phone voice because you don't want to be clocked as someone urban ghetto, you know, that you didn't, you wasn't raised anglo sex you know, so, you know, when I answer the phone, hello, how are you? This is Reginald. <laughs> but with them wearing that mask, we have to realize that not everybody get the privilege to take off that mask. Baby, I am one with mul multiple degrees, I have a bachelor's degree, I have a master's degree, and I've had the privilege to be on RuPaul's Drag Race, not once, but twice. But I still have to wear the mask. And I have to wear the mask to make sure that I don't scare people, that I don't make them afraid of who I am and what I believe. I still try to get my point across and say what I have to say, but at the same time, I have to be very, very careful on the way I say things and how I say them and to who I say I'm too, because I don't have that privilege of being able to be my free self. But how do I do that? I do that in what I'm doing right now. I speak and express and drag. Um, I fight through education. That's why I got those multiple degrees. And what I do is I live my life each and every day showing other people that if you put your mind to it, you can do whatever you want in this world. Look at our trans brothers and sisters that are being killed each and every day, you know, just for living and existing and living within their truth. 
it's a crazy world that we are having to fight just to live each and every day. And our trans brothers and sisters, you know, like the life expectancy is 35 years old. 35 years old for a trans woman to live in America. Like, I think about that, that's crazy. I'm 31 years old. And to think, to think that like, if I was a trans woman, I can, I'm living like in my last days. Like, that's crazy that that is what's going on in America. You know, but we have to figure out a way to coexist. So I'm encouraging each of you to use your voice. We all have a voice. And that voice can truly change the world. How many of you know that you're like powerful? You're gifted in the way that you do things. You did the first step and that's to go to college. That's a powerful thing to do. That's the one thing in this life that you have that no one can ever take away from you. It's education. Let's wind back a little bit. My identity. I identify as a gay male and I do drag. Drag is a self-expression where it's the illusion of a woman, the art of female impersonation. Because I do drag, am I considered a trans woman? Not at all. I do not identify as a trans woman each and every day. Trans women, they are women. They identify as women. They are individuals that was born a particular sex, but realize in their life that their insides don't match their outsides and decide to change it. So there's trans women, trans men, they're non-binary, which are people that go against the whole gender construct of, you know, male, female, and they prefer the pronouns of them and they. And as a human being, if this is gonna make you happy in life, I ain't got nothing to do, do but respect it. So we have cisgender, male and female. Now, a lot of y'all don't know what cisgender means. Let me explain that to you, because I be having to tell my mama, because she's like, what is cisgender? I was like, you identify with the sex you was given at birth. So I identify as a male. I was given male sex at birth, and I still identify as a male. So guess what? I am cis. I'm a cis man. Honey, let me tell you something. My mom was not the most accepting of me coming out, first of all, as gay. And then to come back around, it's like being a common drag queen, you have to come out all over again, honey. And that was hard as well. But over time, I kept trying to show my mom, my family, my grandmother, that look, this is the person I am. I'm still the person you raised. I'm still the person that, you know, you value education, you've instilled that in me. I have my multiple degrees. I'm still doing everything that I can. I am living a productive life. I ain't harming nobody. I'm living my life to the fullest. But then you have to also understand too, and this is something that took me a very, very, very long time to understand, is that sometimes your, your parents and your family around you isn't as accepting as they should be because they are fearful for what can happen to you. So it's like when you come out, oh my God, you're gonna get the AIDS. Oh my God, somebody's gonna kill you. And I know that's really harsh to say, but look at what the baby just said on national television. Like, if you're, you're doing this, you got AIDS, you like, that's the ignorance that they see each and every day. It's not that they are, they're afraid for, that sometimes family are just afraid. And I remember my mother, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I remember my mother, I had came out as gay and then I came, started like doing drag again. It's like, oh my God. I remember my mother going to my first drag show. And I, you know, I had told my friends, my mama's never gone. And this, it was at like a um, cafe. And so there was food, there was drinks. All my friends came, they had gotten my mom good and drunken. Cause sometimes you got to do that with your mama, just get her good and drunk. And they took her to the drag show. And she saw the love that people had for me. She experienced the family that I had. And we got back to my apartment that night. She said, okay, now my spirit is in ease because I know that you're around people that are like me, that love you and can embrace you. So I know that you are in a good place now. And my mother became my biggest cheerleader that day for the rest of her life. Like, 
I have to like tell her now, mama, you can't come with me sometimes because you know, she wants to be there. But a part of loving and accepting is making sure that you show your family that you are the person, not the girl, not the boy, but you are the person that they raised. Who are some of the people that inspired you and maybe taught you what drag was or that gender, gender fluidity was even a thing? Um, who are some of those people or icons or shows or whatever it may be that inspired you and taught you about that? <laughs> That's a really good question, but it's a really funny question because in black sitcoms, drag happened all the time. If you think about it, you got like Martin Lawrence, who played Shanene, who played Big Mama. Then you have Eddie Murphy, who played the whole cast of like The Nutty Professor. Those are the people that really talk about drag. Like, then you get Tyler Perry coming on up, Medea, you know. Isn't that crazy that drag has been around, gender concepts have been around. What I like about those television shows back then when they were doing drag, they still could keep their identity as a man because being gay and being a drag queen and being trans have been like basically shoved into one water bottle without any separation or understanding what each one of it is. It's made life harder. So Martin Lawrence had the privilege to be Shanene and have his whole life given back to him at the end of the day without any repercussions or any criticism. But then you have Laverne Cox um, living her best life and people are like, wait, what the hell? What are you? What is it? That's who I was inspired like when it came to drag. But when I got to know what drag really was, you know, RuPaul inspired me. Laomi, the infamous legendary Vogue dancer who has traveled around the world um, has inspired me. These are the things that are needed in this world. People just speaking up and speaking out. And that's why I admire all of them. I just can't pinpoint one person. I have many. Well, honey, I'm close to being done, but I think that we need a lesson in history because without history, you don't know your history, you ain't going nowhere, honey. So I always like to talk about how black trans women were at the forefront of fighting for the LGBT community. And a lot of times they don't get the, the respect that they deserve because there's a almost like a hierarchy within the gay community. You know, like we decide to put people on a pedestal. Like masculinity in the gay community is like ranked high. And that's part of the a way that we're trying to like knock down that construct. Even though there's a lot that the like the heterosexual community could do, there's a lot that we have to do within our own selves. And that's just respecting black trans women and trans women for their contributions to all of us. The first brick thrown at Stonewall was by a black trans woman. Life is hard. Like it's a true struggle. And put yourself in their seats for a moment where, you know, everywhere you go, People are just taunting you. What good are you getting out of life by just telling a trans person you're a man? Because they're just living their life as a woman. Like, how's that making you better? So I encourage all of you, no matter where you are in life, to come to where, find people where they are in life. I try to do that in everything that I do. Find where people are and then accept them for where they are. Because everybody's not going to be on your level. Everybody ain't going to get on your level. You may not even get on people's level. But as long as you can find a person where they are in life, trust me, you'll be golden. And you'll go a lot further in life. As I am finishing, I just want to encourage all of you to know that you are valued in this world. No matter where you are in life, you're valued. And you're never alone. I know people always talk about they're alone and I'm lonely. And, you know, don't nobody love me. I hear that all the time. And I'm, let, let me let you know something. It ain't true. You're in a higher education institution. And trust me, even if your institution don't have a center, an LGBT center, uh, a straight gay alliance, baby, you know what you can do? You can start it. Start one. The most empowering thing that ever happened in 2008, November 4th, was the presidency of Barack Obama. 
that's where I found and found out and realized that I can be and do whatever I want to in this country. And I say that because right before President Obama was elected, you remember they had the Jenna Fitz March in Jenna, Louisiana. My, my school was just, we was just like, we want to go to this march. And that teacher made it happen for us. And we went to that march and we marched alongside Reverend uh, Jesse Jackson, Reverend Al Sharpton. And that was so empowering that in my school, a predominantly black school, we did something that changed the world. We was a part of history. Then I met Andrea James. Andrea James is a graduate from Wabash College that transitioned. And Andrea James is the human, as a human rights leader and an activist that helped Proposition H turn in California. Prop 8. Andrea James, then I meet her. As I'm starting to meet these people around the world, like, I'm inspired, like, I can do whatever I want to do. In those moments in college, I started taking off the layers of my veil. They had to come up off me. Because at the end of the day, if I don't use this, and I can use my voice for a lot of things, but if I don't use this, I'm not fighting life. Eddie Gloud, Princeton professor, born and raised in Moss Point, Mississippi, and I didn't know that until I went to college. And I realized, like, wait a minute, I can be powerful. I can be powerful. I can take back the power that I never felt that I had. I learned a lot in my college years. That time where you're a young adult smelling yourself, trying to find out, figure out what you want to do in this world. What's going to be your mark? What's going to be your staple? Let me tell you something. Don't nobody in this world owe you a damn thing. You owe yourself to be your very own cheerleader. You have to find your own strength and what motivates you in this world to be whatever you want to be in this world. Fight for those opportunities. You're in college. Don't be afraid to ask for resources. Don't be afraid to ask for help. And don't be afraid to fight for yourself. Because if you ain't fighting for yourself, ain't nobody else gonna do it. Thank you so much for participating as I talked about gender versus sexuality. And you've watched me transform into this beautiful creature, but it's not complete yet. So we're gonna be complete in three, two, one. All right, so we've made it back. We've made the complete transformation. And hopefully throughout this, you see the difference between sexuality as well as gender. And I know this is completely different than anything you've ever experienced, but I wanted to show you no matter what you are, who you choose to be, whoever you identify as, you can be whatever you want to be in this world. And through seeing me, a young black little boy from Mississippi, I hope that you can see the reflection of yourself and inspire you to be whatever you want to be in this world. So y'all have a great day and I hope to see you again soon. Deuces.